Hi, in this video we're going to talk about just some quick tips and tricks for uh, changing the size of your graphs and the, the coding area when you're working with Collimator. Uh, if you aren't familiar, Collimator is a, a very new tool. It's a lot like Simulink for Python users. It's great for doing dynamic simulation of physical systems. I've got a lot of lecture videos both before and after this one showing you a lot of the features and how do you do a fairly complex simulations uh, of various different systems. Collimator makes it really easy to do those. So first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pull up a Google Chrome browser. This is my browser of choice. It works with other browsers. I'm going to go to collimator.ai. I've already done this. I'm logged in and everything. First brings me to my projects. Once I go into my first project, I can go in here to look at the various models. I'm going to start here from this uh, lecture four model. So again, in a previous video, we, uh, whoops. We showed how to develop a, a, a physical model of a chemical reactor. So when I double click on this reactor, this brings me to a window where I can do Python code. This is broken up into three segments. So there's this uh, step. So a uh, collimator works using a, a sequential modular type of simulation, which means you build each part of your model with a little block and then it's going to solve up one part of your model then it's going to move on to the next, move on to the next, it's going to integrate and go one time step forward and just keep on integrating sequentially. So we've set up our model so that this calculates the derivatives of various states. In this model we have a volume of our reactor as a state and we take the change in volume with time as dvdt. We use our model to calculate that. Our other states are CA and CB, which are the concentrations of two different reactants. And we calculate the derivatives of those, respectively, uh, starting with a material balance for each of those. So what happens is each integration step within Collimator is you have to run this code. It calculates the derivatives of your state variables with time. You send those signals each to an integrator, which just integrates them over time. And then we loop that state variable back because it, it shows up um, as an input in our equation. So each time that this happens, this step section of our code is executing. And this is primarily where I'm building most of the complexity of my models. There is another section called the initialization section. And this is where you're doing things only at the very beginning of your simulation. So you could be doing things, I think, like defining parameters here. I'm using this to import NumPy, which we use uh, in our step part. And then finalize, this is where you can do post-processing. After your model has run, uh, this section is used to do some final calculations just at the end. And I actually have never used this section. So if we want to get into this coding section, this uh, step coding section, you see our space is pretty limited. We can expand that just by minimizing the finalize section and the initialization section. And this would let us get into, uh, m make it a little bit easier to run our simulation or to code our simulation and add more equations here. So that just a handy little trick that I just discovered recently. Um, OK, so now I'm going to go ahead and run my model. When I come up here and I hit this button, this will both compile the code and then run my model for that 60 minutes. So by default, it, it pops up these plots. By default, they're very long and skinny. I have here the, I'm going to close this for a second and just show you I've selected by left clicking the visualize button on my three state variables, volume, concentration of A, and concentration of B. Nothing else has that selected. So these will not show up in my plots. Just That's just my preference to make it a little less noisy. Again, by default, they're, they're horizontally stretched out. They're long and narrow. Um, but you can do things, again, like grab the signal for one and drag it on top of the other. Um, you can also make the plots go side by side. So I'm going to do this here. I'm going to make these two side-by-side -side plots. And you can actually uh, stretch them out vertically now, too, to make them more square. And this makes it handier to, to read the data if you need to. So I just grab, I go below each plot. I scroll down until this very bottom little sliver of the plot is highlighted. And then I'm, I left click and hold. And then you can change the, uh, change the horizontal, I'm uh, sorry, change the vertical height of each of these plots. So you can certainly zoom here by clicking on the zoom button, zoom in. Um, you can come back here to reset it. There, 
If you want to save the plots, one thing you can do is right click and go to copy image. Then I can go to a, a Word document or a PowerPoint presentation. I can copy it in there. Of course, if you want to get more sophisticated with plotting, you can use the wonderful uh, Python interfaces that this offers and collect data into Python and use something like a, a Jupyter Notebook or another IDE to, to generate really nice plots. Or you can come here to this button to download the simulation results, and that'll download everything that you want into a CSV file. Um, so there, so this naturally downloads all of that data here. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much.